Hello everyone! In this video I will show you how to build and use an ESP32 based LEGO Spike simulator using MicroPython environment. LEGO Spike is a great educational system for kids to learn the secrets of programming and robot building. The only problem with this educational system is that the code cannot be debugged easily. The ESP32 based unofficial LEGO Spike simulator is born to make the life of the young developer easier. The code written in the LEGO Spike environment can run without modification on the ESB32 based development board and the entire program running process can be traced and the robot's behavior can be modified. External peripherals like uh, sensors, motors, LEDs can also be connected to the ESB32 microcontroller to test the program in a real life situation. The simulator is not substitute for the LEGO robot, but it is give you a cheap alternative to try out the LEGO, LEGO environment. The program is open source, some functionalities are not fully implemented. First, let's see how the LEGO spike works. Start the LEGO education spike program and then uh, power up the robot just pressing the button on the primary hub and then connect it through Bluetooth. Check the connection for the different peripherals uh, to which port which peripheral is connected. Then uh, use the knowledge base and simply copy out the necessary code and press the yellow play button and you immediately will see a smiling face on the matrix. Okay, let's see how the simulator operates. Uh, it has a different development environment called Tony. Uh, simply opening an example file and pressing the green play button, it will run the code and as you can see on the small display you can see similar faces. The code is running on the ESB32 microcontroller. Uh, on this picture you can see the schematic of the ESP32 LEGO Spike simulator. The core of uh, this whole circuit uh, is the development board which simulates the prime hub of the LEGO Spike. There is a ultrasonic ranging module which simulates uh, the distance sensor. The speaker is simulated by an active buzzer which needs a PMP transistor to change the polarity of the signal. Micro servos uh, simulating the motor and the motor pair. Color LEDs simulating the status lights uh, and uh, there is LEDs uh, in the distance sensor and in the color sensor. There is a 5 volt power supply. Uh, the distance sensor and the motors needs 5 volt. The other modules are powered by the ESP32 3.3 volt power. The two push buttons simulating the left and the right buttons. There is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer which simulates the force sensor. Uh, color sensor which simulates the color sensor, uh, there is a gyroscope and accelerometer which simulates the motion sensor and there is a display module which uh, simulates the light matrix. Okay let's see how to build the simulator and uh, use two breadboards uh, and uh, I used a special cabling tool uh, with special cables, but uh, you can use uh, traditional breadboard cables. First I installed the display, the motion sensor and the color sensor because they're using uh, the same I2C communication interface. For that there is need only two cables to be connected uh, and linked to the three module and to the ESP32 microcontroller. The power cables are also chain linked and uh, connected to the ground and 
to the 3.3 volt power. The next component is the potentiometer. There is a need for three cables, the ground power and uh, one cable to the analog digital converter of the microcontroller. Then the two push buttons need only two cables, one ground and the second one goes directly to our general pin of the microcontroller. The next periphery is uh, the LEDs. They are also using uh, three cables to power and one for uh, controlling the LEDs and connected to a general pin of the microcontroller. The next sensor is a distance sensor. Need the power and uh, two pins for the microcontroller. Uh, one for the echo and uh, one for the trigger signal. Then the speaker coming which uh, needs uh, the power and uh, the signal which is connected to the transistor. Uh, 5 volt power supply is connected to the servo and to the ultrasonic sensor. This is the final product. Now let's see how to install it. Connect it to a USB port of the computer, then download the Tony development environment and download also the MicroPython firmware. For that, first you have to choose the ESP32 side and download the latest release then on the github download the simulator code now you have all the three components uh, on your PC first install the Tony which takes only really just a few minutes. Then you have to copy the simulator files to the folder where Tony can reach it start the Tony development environment, go to the tools options and then to the interpreter, find the COM port belongs to the ESP32 microcontroller, then install the firmware, and you have to choose the port again and browse for the firmware. I recommend to erase the flash before installing uh, it will take a few minutes to install the firmware. If everything is OK, then uh, you will see a console and uh, the device on the left corner. Then you have to upload the complete spike directory the MicroPython device, then you are ready to use the simulator. For that, simply just open an example file from your PC or you can open it from the MicroPython device if you uploaded this directory too, and then press the play button and you are running already the simulator. The results can be seen on the screen and on the display as well. Okay, let's see some side-by-side -side comparison. 
here we'll test the Lego spike with the motor um, with this code it just simply start running the servo motor and uh, in the simulator the similar code will start running the, the servo in different configurations um, the servo has to be modified because uh, it has to be changed to continuous operation The second example is uh, with force sensor. The code is very simple. It just uh, wait until it pressed and start the motor, and when it's released, then it uh, stops the motor. And let's see how it works on the simulator. Here the rotation of the potentiometer is equivalent to the pressing of the force sensor. In this example, the color sensor is tested. It just wait for a new color and uh, if there is a red color, then it uh, starts the motor and prints out uh, the red text. And the simulator has a similar code. I just uh, remove a tape from the color sensor and in any color change will start uh, the motor. The next example is uh, checking the distance. If the distance is closer than 20 centimeters, the motor starts. In the simulator, the same code has the same effect. You have to lift it a, a bit to have the right reading because the rain sensor can sense the uh, ground as well. In this example, the motion sensor is tested. Uh, it's checking for a new orientation, and uh, if the orientation is uh, front or up, then uh, the different face will show up on the light matrix. same code on the simulator you have to take the whole board and just flip it and uh, on the display there is a different face so just for summarize the sp32 based lego spike simulator in a MicroPython environment allows you to test the code written for a Lego Spike robot and create a special test environment that would be difficult to do with a real Lego robot. The code for the simulator program is far from complete. A lot of functions are only partially implemented. For example, the motion sensor does not handle different events at all. The simulator could be improved a lot. Uh, the ESP32 based LEGO Spark Simulator system can be improved in many ways. For example, the code can be uploaded to the ESP32 board and set to start when the board starts. 
and code can be uploaded via Wi-Fi.